Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Tale of Them. We are now in Rhinebeck, New York. The last you've seen of my travels is that we end in the original place of the Festival of Woodstock. So if you haven't seen any of my videos, we are two Belgian people who are now in the USA. We're gonna travel in the States and in Canada for a whole, whole while. We have a working visa for Canada. We have a tourist visa for the States for six months. After that, we're gonna explore the American, the whole American continent. So we bought the van in Canada, in Montreal, because it is the one of the only places where we can legally register a vehicle on our own names. And drove it back into the USA, all the way to Philadelphia to our friends. Our friend is an amazing woodworker and helped us with the whole build. We envisioned it, he thought it out and actually built it, and I helped it. So. Um, yeah, that, that is out of the way, so that, that is clear. I definitely had a lot of help with this fan build and I could not have done it by myself the way it is now. So if you've seen my last video, we are now a few weeks on. I haven't made a video in quite some time. We had some troubles with the van, the van build was going on. Had to go to the shop a few times, so yeah, it was quite an ordeal. But now we're on the road and we're at our friend's farm in Rhinebeck, New York. So we left for this journey um, with the idea of working in Canada and we left for this journey with not too much money so we definitely knew that we had to um, go for a budget plan. We had to make sure everything was within our budget and that we didn't spend too much money on building it out. So we did the whole van build apart from buying the van of course for below 2000 US dollars so we're very happy. I think it's around 1,800 that we spend on the wood, the supplies, um, the bed, the gas stove to cook on, the fridge. So all those details are within those 2,000, like a little bit less than 2,000 dollars. So I can't wait to show you guys the actual van, how we build it out, like the little intricacies we put in there. And I really think this cargo van build is one of the most efficient, definitely for our use case or for our the purpose we need it for but it's one of the most efficient cargo van builds i have seen to date so we wanted a van that was fit for all of our needs that was like built for us that's one of the reasons why we wanted to buy an empty van and do the conversion ourselves um so we could make sure it was exactly how we wanted it to be so the van the actual van uh, it's a Ford E150 2009 with a 4.6 gas liter engine. Um, we named it Ico after the Grateful Dead song and after a few other things. Uh, we thought the name was really fitting. But so we bought this van for about 5,500 US dollars. Um, and we bought it because it, we wanted a cargo van because it's small enough but also big enough. Small enough to get into smaller places and like foresty roads, but big enough to actually live in for a while. Um, and also, because it has little rust for a Canadian vehicle, it did have some mechanical issues that um, we didn't know about, but are now hopefully fixed. Yeah, the whole thing was definitely, it was a work van before, so it was filled with stuff when we drove it back from Canada to fill you to our friends. So we had to take all of it out. Um, stripped the whole thing clean before we actually did the van build and it was quite some stuff it was quite dirty um, so it felt really good to actually clear it out but now to the actual van build first thing you probably arguably probably most definitely see is this colorful fabric this colorful seed friend gave us this fabric a 70s vintage fabric that it resembles a Volkswagen, the Volkswagen fabric of that time. So it's a nice seed, but also when you lift it up, it contains our fridge. It's a Bouge RV or however you pronounce it, 23 quart fridge, which comes in real handy in these hot days. We built the box a little bit wider so that we could put some insulation in there. Um, so that our fridge is better insulated and it actually takes less energy. And then you have this seat. When you go sit on this seat, there's a little table point that folds out, which is kind of like a little desk if you need to do some work or if you want to do whatever. 
and you have a nice view. You can open up the doors, have a nice view. Pretty nice workspace. Underneath here is our water supply. I do have to say there are a few things that still need to happen. The most of it is all done, but like covering this wall up, making the water supply a little bit more easy, um, putting some or doors or a little like, um, like, um, like, um, like, um, like, um, up, 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 or little pieces of wood in front of the closet so that nothing falls out. So there's definitely some stuff that still has to happen, but okay, let's go on. Water, you can take this out, back in, and it's like a little lip to hold it in while driving. I wanna make that a little bit better. Another compartment right here we're now using for some like electronics and stuff like that. Then we're gonna be here in winter too, and also in Canada in the winter. So we're gonna have to have a compartment for shoes that is resistant to water at the start of the door. So that is right here. Here we are storing all our shoes. Um, here is gonna be a trash can. I still have to get that. The reason why it's definitely nice to have our shoes here is because this, all of this stuff, it's actually a laminate, so it's uh, so again, it's good against water. It's not actually wood. Um, so yeah, we built that whole floor, kind of in the van, to make it easy to clean. Then also, what you see here at this side is this compartment. We wanted to have a full-on compartment, closing off the front from the back to have really the feeling that we are in our own little cabin and in our own little space. Um, definitely gives like a little bit more of a safer feeling and so when this door is closed it's almost snuck against the thing so nobody can watch or look inside of the vehicle all the windows are tinted now that I'm talking of windows the way we cover our windows when we're sleeping to not let no light in and for some extra insulation is for now this stuff just with some Velcro on there. We are gonna put the same fabric that's here on this, that the window covers are beautiful. So then you go like this. Carol made these beautiful window covers, perfectly snug, so like that. And that's for all the four windows in the back so that everything is kind of blocked out. Nobody can look. All right, so inside of the van, we have this little divider is made with a little door. I still have to make um, a door. Knob. Knob, door handle. And for now with the bottom, you can just do like this and open it up. Don't mind the front, the storage at this point. There we go, close that up again. This is some of our storage. Um, like I say, I have to make it a little bit safer still, but storage, high storage, like you can see here, because I'm bringing my guitar. Um, Kato brings her mandolin and just for general higher pieces. This storage for clothing, books, that kind of stuff. Um, electronics, I'm charging my drone batteries here. And then here is my power station. This thing has been a true blessing. It's an EcoFlow Delta II. It's about a kilowatt of power. Um, it's like fast charging, can charge through solar, the car or AC. And now that we're talking about power, if you go to the roof, over there is a 365 watt solar panel, which just gives us enough power to run my laptop, Kado's iPad, to run our fridge. Um, yeah, this has been a true blessing. I got that for 130 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, it's a steal for having unlimited, an unlimited power supply from the sun. So then the kitchen. We built a little storage compartment here. Um, it's a bit of a mess right now, but we're just settling in our van and finding the right spots. And that just takes some time sometimes. So this is just like storage or like pantry, or how do you say that? It's our pantry. Um, here also, these are all walnut boards that my friend had, so beautiful. Um, this is also the walnut board. We built a little um, extra shelf on the bottom here to actually store herbs and small stuff, gallery. Um, also gonna make a little cabinet here still. 
Um, and then we have our workspace, our countertop, um, all built out of three four inch plywood, and then also a laminate to make it easy to clean. Under here, which you now cannot properly see is storage. You will be able to see it in a minute. But once this storage is a little bit clear, you can go and sit underneath this. Yeah, my feet don't really fit under here. And go and sit underneath this and actually also work on your if you have to so that we have like two little workspaces each for our own i put electricity under the floor from the power station to here so here we have a little here we have power i can actually charge stuff here or have my laptop here and just plug it in right here we bought our stove top it was like 50 bucks in the canadian tire so we have some vinyl like stick on tiling splatter screen kind of thing in the back of the kitchen to keep splatters of our walls also was maybe 20 bucks on amazon it is quite close to the ceiling but i put my ceiling fan right here which is also connected to my power station so that it doesn't drain the car battery and so you can just have air coming in have air pulled out so when you're cooking, I sometimes put a fan here and it like blows the steam or air straight here and takes it right out. The roof is all made out of V-planks. This wall here is also all made out of um, the V-planks just to cover everything up nicely to have the feeling that you're kind of in a cabin. Um, it was quite some work. We did that with three people. So thanks to you and Carl, we managed to put this in. So this light here is connected to my power station. And then the bed, which is, was also quite an ordeal. My friend did some amazing engineering with the bed. First of all, we bought a six inch mattress, which was a little bit of a mistake. A four inch mattress would have done the trick. And then I would have had a little bit more space here to actually be able to like have like my legs a little bit more free. We might still buy a thinner mattress in the future. So right now the whole bed transformation looks a little bit awkward, but it's going to be better once I am planning on sewing the same fabric as we have here on our little seat, the vintage fabric, um, on our separate cover, like our separate foam mattress pieces. We got the mattress into three pieces, uh, this, this, and then one that way. And I'm planning on making separate mattress covers so that we can just take this whole thing off the moment that we are trying to make our sofa. Um, and then also the foam won't stick to each other as much. So you will have, I hope, a better, more smooth experience when making uh, the sofa. The idea is that these two flip up. So you take this one and you kind of get it on top of the other one. There's a, a piece of wood that flips up. The, my beautiful assistant is mm -hmm. doing this with me. There's a little lock that you can get into place so that it doesn't go back forth. And so, yeah, then you have this piece. This is your back piece. Also for this, it would have been better if this was only a four inch mattress. So it wasn't as bulky and big. And But for now, just to save the, the money and also not to waste this mattress, we're just gonna go with the flow of this six inch one. So this one goes all the way in the back. And then you have your tree pieces. You have all the space you need right here. You can easily access this storage that's underneath the kitchen and you can access the storage that is underneath the bed too. So yeah, it does look a little bit weird right now with this whole thing on there, but once it's just like uh, covered cushions, it's gonna be really nice. Um, it makes like an L-shaped couch, couch, so you can have like a little bit in the back here and like have like a little bit more space here or sit here, sit with three to four people here if you want. Um, and then here if your back resting on there. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is that the wheel covers are covered. All of the back is like covered. Everything, the um, ceiling, floor, wheels, everything is covered in insulation. Van is really well insulated, um, preparing for winter in Canada, of course. Also, something we still have to buy is a propane bottle that's for this spot here. And there will also be enough space for to have a little 
water container um, so that I can build a little sink in the future. Under here is more storage all around. Under the bed is also just storage. So yeah, I, for, in my personal experience, this is like the coziest and most efficient van build for my person purpose I could have for below two thousand dollars it's to me it's really insane I never expected anything like this again thanks to my amazing friends Carl you and uh, the whole lot that was living there uh, all of them were amazing and helping me so much never could have done it without them we are preparing to make the whole trip out west and have some adventures along the way. Our first stop is, our first real long stop is gonna probably be Washington where we're gonna be in the mountains and hiking and camping and doing all crazy adventurous stuff. If you wanna see that, definitely subscribe. So yeah, it was a little bit of a different episode of Tale of Tim, you know, normally I kind of show you what's going on in my life and the adventures and this was just more of a van build. Um, but that's also just what was happening in my life these past few we few weeks this was what i was doing you know playing music and doing this so yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next video